Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and in today's video, I'm setting up my bullet journal for the month of August. Let's get into it. Alright, so my theme for August is butterflies. I'm so excited about this theme. I feel like a lot of people choose butterflies as a theme. Uh, they even choose the same butterflies, like one side a butterfly and one side flowers. Um, so it's not particularly original, but I've never done butterflies in my bullet journal, so I really wanted to try it out this time. I was kind of unsure how to like get the, the shaping right. I'm not sure I quite nailed it with the flower side, but let's have a look at how I did. So I went for the colours purple. I feel like purple is such a pretty colour. Uh, I don't really use a lot of purple in my daily life in general, so I thought that it would make things a little bit different and a bit more exciting. So first of all, I started with the colour of the wing, and then I'm going to use a black uh, marker to outline the darker lines of the butterfly wings. I thought that this way made it look um, like a nice ombre colour and I think it just kind of adds a little bit of a nice gesture, a nice pop to the wing and yeah. If you're curious about the colours, I'm using purple Crayola Super Tips as well as these two purple brush pens that I got from a pack of brush pens that were non-branded from like Target in Australia, so just any colours. And I had a lot of fun colouring this out, it almost felt like a colouring in book because you can see the pencil marks uh, behind, so it's just, it was very meditative. I feel like I've used the word meditative many times in the last couple of videos and I apologise, but I think maybe I'm trying to tell myself something. <laughs> I hesitated a lot with which black marker would be better suited to draw out the black outlines of the wings. I went in with a black uh, brush pen from a random pack and then I went in with this Tombow Fudunosuke brush pen and then I also went in with a fine liner. In the end I think I'm settling for the brush pen because it just works and everything is quite smooth with it so I like that look. But yeah, I was really struggling. So if you are going to recreate my theme, definitely go for a smaller brush pen. I think it works a lot better. Now let's just have a quick time lapse of me filling in the black sides of the wing and moving on to the flower side. For the flowers, I didn't go for anything particularly elaborate. I just did these very basic flowers and then I added in some leaves. I thought that it would just be it would just be easier and have a very nice effect to have it that way. I used a Pigma super what? A Sakura Pigma Micron to draw the flowers out and then I used my Crayolas to colour the flowers in. At first I wasn't going to colour in the leaves, I was just going to leave the colour scheme this purple colour without any added colours, but I did change my mind in the end and I did fill in the leaves in the colour green. I also wrote to the month of August at the bottom of the page and I thought that this was a very stunning uh, cover photo. I think the butterfly is definitely one of my favourites this year. Uh, dare I say I should have probably tried to do just a full butterfly without the flower part because I really think the wing looks amazing but I think the aesthetic looks really nice anyway. And there's our cover page, minus the green because I flipped before colouring it. Starting a theme is always difficult because of the colour combinations, you never know if anything is going to work or not, but then once you've done the cover page I feel like everything just falls into place. So all of a sudden drawing the butterfly was super easy, I just knew exactly what colours to go for, where to place them and how to do them, and everything just went a lot faster that way. So this is basically exactly the same thing that I was doing before, I just have four different colours that I alternate over the wings and then I used the black marker to make sure that everything was put together and actually looked like a butterfly wing. And then of course I grabbed a smaller, thinner pen to draw the flowers on the other side and it's just the same butterfly that I use over and over again. That I will use over and over again. Sorry. <laughs> the only conceivable difference between this butterfly and the one from my cover page is that I did actually only use purple in the butterfly with no green, but really that's a very negligible detail, not very important. <laughs> You'll notice I stopped the butterfly's flower wing about one, maybe less, maybe half a centimeter off from the edge, and that is in preparation for the tabs. Now this particular page won't have a, ta a tab cut out onto it on the left page, but it will have a tab on the right page. And the reason why I'm not filling it all the way to the side is that when I'm flipping through my tabs at the end, 
I just like to have everything nice and tidy and not have anything overlapping anything else. But that's the only reason. I mean, I could have gone all the way to the edge for this particular, for the specific butterfly. Lastly, for the monthly log, you can't have a monthly log without a calendar. So here is a very quick time lapse of me drawing in my calendar. The calendar is four by four squares for each of the days, and I thought it looked really cute. It takes up less space, more space for the to-do list on the left. I'm now moving on to my habit tracker, and from the pencil and wax, you can tell that this is going to be a circular habit tracker. This was so satisfying to draw out, but it took forever. I had to get the lining and adjustments and everything correct because it was difficult because I didn't have the right tools but I think it looks amazing and this is by far my favorite habit tracker I, that I have ever done. Uh, circular, I've, it's, I find it difficult to plan these things out. If you've done a circular one before, did you find it easy? Did you find it hard? Let me know in the comments down below but I found that it was quite difficult to draw out but in the end everything worked out especially because I did end up finding a um, what do you call those, um, the circle things? Oh my god, hold on, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Give me a second. A protractor! It's, it's a protractor. That's the one I was looking for. Anyway, uh, that is my habits page all done, and I have eight spaces to write out eight different habits that I will track throughout the month. I'm not sure which habits I'll be tracking. Probably usually the same ones, yoga, pilates. Um, that's two, that's two habits. <laughs> I'll figure them out later and I also just added in the days of the, the different days of the month uh, to complete the habit tracker and I will be using of course the color purple to fill out this habit tracker and I can't wait to see what it looks like at the end of the month because I can imagine that this kind of habit tracker looks so nice when it's filled in but yeah I'm excited wow look at that habit tracker isn't she gorgeous anyway Let's move on to my steps and my screen time tracker and I've decided to do a graph tracker with all of the components together. So steps and screen time measured in the same graph because I did that for July and I thought it looked good but the one in July was a lot smaller so I just wanted to make it a lot bigger this time. And I of course drew bigger butterflies this time and I made sure not to overlap onto my graph. So I started drawing the graph uh, by writing out the numbers first and on the y-axis I go from 0 to 21 and this corresponds to either 21,000 steps or 21 hours of screen time knowing that in theory, actually there's no in theory, I do not spend 21 hours a day on my phone because that would be absolutely ridiculous but I do, I have been known embarrassing I know to spend like 10 hours on my phone in a day on a weekend when I'm a bit hungover anyway and then on the x-axis this goes all the way to 31 for the 31 days of August of course I then drew out all of my pretty little butterflies I chose to do four butterflies um, honestly drawing out the colors of the wings is way more satisfying than drawing out the flowers because the flowers take so much longer to do but the overall look at the end is very, very worth it. And you'll notice with the very far right butterfly that the wing doesn't go to the edge of the page because again, as I mentioned, I am doing tabs so that edge would be cut off anyway, which means it's just a waste of my time and a waste of color. I was getting a bit bored of drawing the same flowers as well, so I tried to change them up a little bit, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's a flower, so I mean, it doesn't really do much difference, but I think it looks very nice. <laughs> I also wrote steps and screen time at the top with this Pentel brush sign pen. I love this brand for brush pens. They are so smooth and so nice and I just like thinner brush pens. I love my Tombow dual brush pens but they are really fat ones so unless I have a specific project to use them I don't particularly enjoy using them and I find that the Pentel brush pens are just a lot more versatile and easier to use in my everyday life. And if for whatever reason Pentel decides to watch this video and you know one day deems my channel worthy of being you know partnershiped with you know just just hit me up because I love that brand a lot. Anyway that is my steps and screen time page. I know it might be boring to watch me recreate the same spreads every single month in my bullet journal even though I do change up the theme 
but it's just I I want to emphasize the point that I use these spreads every single month I don't change them because they're just they make my life better because I feel like I'm more organized through that way that being said I did create a video where I have fun spreads to integrate into your bullet journal every month or you know every other month if you so please and I think that that's a really fun way of jazzing things up a little bit I feel like those are spreads that perhaps I would include maybe at the beginning of my journal or like every three months because it does change things up a little bit without making it too cumbersome in a journal which already has this many different spreads to begin with just in case you are new to my channel, this finance tracker is separated, divided, sorry, into five different columns with date, item, category, cost, and then a little checkbox at the end to see if I've calculated. I've input that specific amount into my final totals. And then I have a separate little table at the bottom that is the totals, and then I write in the totals per category. And I have 13 different categories, uh, including rent, phone, metro, and bills, and those kind of things. Here's a question for you. Do you track your finances? And if you do, do you go into as much detail as I do? The next spread is my one line a day and my gratitude log. So these ones are very fun spreads for me to do. I really enjoy sitting down at the end of each day or in the morning before working and writing down what I was grateful for in the day, in the previous day. It gives me like a sense of a, a sense of accomplishment or a sense of happiness to see that I actually am grateful for the things that I do, for the things that happen to me in my life. So it's a very special spread in my opinion. For the butterflies, I tried to keep the page as symmetrical as possible by sort of placing the wings at the same angles on each side of the page. I think I did it pretty well. It looks pretty symmetrical in my opinion, so I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. So this is the final one line a day and gratitude love page done. It looks amazing. And now we move on to my weekly spreads. I should have, in hindsight, made my weekly spreads smaller because in August I am not working, I am on holidays, I have friends visiting, so I don't anticipate using my bullet journal as much. So I could have saved some paper and space and time by making these spreads uh, smaller uh, with less, uh, like for example, two weeks on, on one page, basically. But that's fine, they are, at the end of the day, you know, I have fun drawing these spreads, so it doesn't really matter too much. This particular spread was inspired by the account within the surface. I'm just inserting a picture of her spread. By the time I remembered that I wanted it to look like this, I had already traced the boxes. But oh well, minimalistic times will be next time. <laughs> I want to say that this next weekly spread was also inspired or slightly copied off of Within the Surface's spreads, but for the life of me, I cannot find the spread that looks similar to this. So let's just say that I was inspired by a minimalistic spread. Maybe hers, maybe not. My next weekly spreads are copied directly from my July plan with me because I use this specific Dutch door where I have two weeks planned into this same design space and I have different boxes of the size I think they're 12 by 12 boxes and then a nice header at the top and then I just wanted to cut this out with a, with a pair of scissors and I just wanted to show you on camera what that looks like. This specific Dutch door is fast becoming one of my favourites because it's so simple and yet I only have to do one design for two whole weeks which basically means that I have less things to worry about. Not less things to worry about but less things to do which is all around beneficial for me. For this weekly spread I played on the symmetry again by making my butterflies symmetrical on the top of the page. I decided to represent only the top halves of the butterflies because I thought it just looked really fun. I also inverted the dark colors by putting the dark color on the outside of the wing rather than on the inside, which is what I've been doing until now. With the flowers, nothing more to say, they're just flowers and everything looked very, very nice. This month, I also finally remembered to include a shot of me writing month review because I have never done that in any of my previous plan with me videos. And I do have a monthly review page, which you can see as well in my uh, 2021 part one, well, first half of the year flip through because you'll see a few 
month reviews. But the idea is I just write the words month reviews on one page or two pages, depending on how I feel. And at the end of the month, I will catalog what I did or how I felt during the month. Come back uh, at the end of one of these months soon, I'm going to be doing a full video on how I do a month review. Last month, I attempted to explain how I had mistakenly cut out my tabs. And this month, I'm going to try and explain how I did them correctly. So in the month of August, I did cut my tabs in the right way. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tabs to cut out. So each of the tabs are four, four squares, four boxes wide. And I cut them out starting from four boxes from the top of the first tab ending four boxes off the bottom for the last tab. That means that when I hold the tabs open, or when I hold August open, I can flip to the month review back to the monthly log without holding down on any of the tabs. I hope that makes sense. Um, you'll see it in the flip through, how this looks like. And if you want to compare it with July, you can click onto my July plan with me video and head to the flip through to see what the difference is. It just, it's just nicer the way that I've done it in August. So I hope that makes sense. Then I just grabbed all of my purple markers and color, uh, color swatches to see what colors would be for my tabs. And I tried to arrange them in somewhat of a, I don't know, a rainbow color, well, in the purple scheme of things. And that's what it looks like. Finally, I just grabbed a black pen to write out the names or the labels for each of my tabs. So we have month overview, habits, steps and screen, finances, gratitude, week 31, 32 and 34 on the different tabs. Uh, week 33 is on the other side of the tab when you flip the tabs the other way. Man, my plan with me videos are getting longer and longer every single time I upload. I don't know how I feel about it. I like it. I like having longer videos. It just, it makes things, uh, I elaborate on things and I just, you know, it makes them fun, I guess. But let me know how you feel about these longer videos. And now let's get to the final flip through of this whole month of August. This theme was so much fun to draw out using just colors and textures. And I really, really like it. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. So here is my finance page and you can see I'm holding down the tabs and you can see at the top on the left there's like a blank space and the bottom on the right page there's a blank space. That's what I mean by having the tabs cut out correctly. And that is the last page, so sorry, my month review is the last page, it's completely blank but I will show you how to fill it in in another video. Thank you for watching my video. If you're still here, give this video a thumbs up and comment a little butterfly so I know who's sticking around till the end of my videos. If you're setting up your bullet journal for August, what theme are you going with? And do you have any exciting plans for the rest of summer? Let me know down in the comments below. I hope you have a great week and I will see you next week. Bye.